Hey, good evening, everyone, again. So for those who's going to gonna listen to this podcast, I'm Gregory and Gregory Damascus, and I'm here joined with um, Alexandro Carletti. And we're setting up a, a men's, men's group. And what comes up for me when I think of a men's group is the idea of a specific group with a specific purpose, not so much in terms of gender orientation or um, any particular orientation in that regard, or that any orientation is necessary, um, other than selecting the, a specific group in order to identify um, issues that are specific to the group, not for the purpose of uh, separation, but much more for the purpose of deepening one's understanding and looking at uh, cultural, uh, social and um, Dare you say spiritual? Yeah, spiritual, of course, spiritual as well. Um, although when I think of spirituality, I always think about un unity, about unifying. Um, but yeah, definitely spiritual as well. Um, so cultural, social and ethnological um, issues that come forwards. Um, uh, in a gender specific uh, approach so as a mile what is it that you encounter in particular um, as we are located in in South Australia in the Australian continent in the southern hemisphere of um, our beloved earth so what is it that identifies a mile as a mile. Um, how does a mile get socially depicted or, or required to um, behave within the norms or confines of a society? And how does one both liberate uh, or first understand and then liberate um, himself from those confines so that one can act and be free, authentic, and uh, direct in his expression of self. So this is the kind of notions that I think uh, bring um, a group of men together can be very successfully explored and um, delved into so that um, truths, solutions, uh, and prompts are given so that change and expansion and the development of awareness and insight um, can be cultivated. So, you know, what is it like to be a man in South Australia, in Australia? What is the, what is the norms of a mile, you know? The question that I am prompting myself is in the history and the the practice or the process of secret men's business. Secret men's business, right? Mm. Women have secret women's business, men mm. have secret men's business. And in different cultures we have different rites of passage, different initiations, mm. different prompts and processes where through our own biological evolution our balls drop, our voice deepens, we find ourselves with changing bodies and new desires and new fluctuations in our consciousness and we go through different phases and the the process that i am interested in as a young man is in looking at different demographics different age groups different uh, orientations of consciousness and bringing them together in an environment where we can begin to examine our own lives from the altered perspectives of each other 
and we can prompt each other to ask some of the questions that are um, brought up to our attention, such as what is the what is the right relationship we can have with ourselves? What are some of the issues that we're facing as men? What are some of the prejudices in our male psyche that we might be still grappling with? And in a group sit in a group sitting in a group setting, having the opportunity to listen to the unique perspectives of different age groups serves to expand one's awareness around these inner aspects of one's life which we might not even be questioning until they are questioned and when when we bring ourselves together in a uh, ceremonial way in a sacred way in a way of honoring the the masculine spirit then the sacred masculine archetypes can emerge and it's in the examination of those sacred masculine archetypes that we can sink deeper into the potentials that they hold within the activation of them within our psyche. And when we meet people that are exemplifying these archetypes, we can more easily identify uh, what they represent and we can more easily understand what they activate within us and what they represent to us. Mm. Okay, so... I'm kind of like um, still at the uh, kind of like listening to all of this yeah so the question is what is secret about a man's business you know what makes a man's business secret you know what, what's the kind of secret um, you know because we, this is about revelations and since this um, is something that we bring forward and I'm just kind of like grappling with the idea, secrets, man's business. Uh, what, what, what is it that, you know, you personally identify as a secret man's business? What is it to you? What, what is it that you, and I mean, you can equally ask me that person, or we can ask anyone in the room when present, you know. Mm. Um, you know what? What is it? What is it? What has even come into your mind when you think secret man's business? Right. The insight that I get is in the um, in the relationship between public and private, mm. and secret being more private, not something that is necessarily told on the soapboxes of media mm. or on the streets, but something that's more esoteric, something that's more of an inner dimension, something that's more so do you, do a, a discovery we can have within our own self relating to how we operate within ourselves. Okay, so, right, so secret is therefore that part which is not revealed yet. So it's not necessarily a secret man's business in terms of uh, we're going to get together and do something that nobody will know what that is. <laughs> Leave it like having, you know, being a cult and we have some kind of like secret agendas or secret codes or secret um, activities that we do and we're not revealing to others but we engage in whether mystical or, or you know, you know, um, I guess benevolent or sinister in their nature, you know, like secrets, you know, go out and create some mischief or... It's interesting that the word there. secret triggers that uh, expectation of a response from other people's minds. Mm. And... Well, I'm just thinking secret is, is secret is generally something that is not revealed. So secret lacks the revelatory aspect. So it's something that is hidden. And so, I guess for our purposes, I like the term um, in relation to um, revelation. So, secret as in not revealed. So, what's the man's business, you know? What, what, is, what is it to be a man? What's the qualities or um, attitudes or... You know, um, 
what are the dimensions of There's masculinity dimensions, yeah. that we explore within our lives mm. so what is it that you explore to this point you know like what is it to you um, exploring your own masculine nature within this life and 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 what is it that you encounter as an individual um, as a contrast or as a um, as an allowance or a disallowance from the society that you live in or the circle that you exist within mm. Mm. so it's a very interesting question and I think that what it triggers within me is the initiatory process in the sense that an, an initiation represents a, a point where one examines one's life often through some kind of process some inner process that triggers certain uh, states of mind, states of consciousness, which reformat and reformulate one's inner being so that one emerges from the initiatory process in a more expanded, a more empowered, a more um, insightful state of being. Mm. And in that shift of consciousness, the old is recognized and let go and the new is embraced and one has the opportunity to look at one's life from a fresh perspective and so as as men the in the male psyche we have this warrior which is a warring aspect and we carry this biological suit which is our physical body which has all sorts of um, hardware problems, the fact that we seek to attack and destroy other people is one of those dimensions of the male psyche. The, the warrior um, in its inverted form is destructive and seeks to destroy. And so the modern secret men's business in our culture and in the global culture is the military. It's predominantly a male organization which provides initiation in the form of training, which shift the male psyche towards a different orientation, a different worldview, a different perspective of oneself within a, um, a group setting. And I think that the equivalent uh, initiation for the masculine to become a spiritual warrior is needed in our society. And this is the point I'm trying to drive at. What is the spiritual warrior archetype, which has that um, dimension, not of aggression, but of strength, of support, of camaraderie, which exists within that warrior archetype? And, and how can that spiritual warrior archetype emerge in our own consciousness, within our own being, so that we can embody what that represents on a practical level? Mm. Mm. Yeah, <clears throat> very valid points. Um, so, in one hand, you've got, um, you know, the the general social paradigm, or the paradigm that largely exists, that is generally attributed to a mind. But what comes to my mind, um, it's an aggressive, um, more dominant. Um, approach but often more than not um, there's also females behind that and we have to recognize that a lot of the times females um, have used historically that mild drive and have driven miles into wars you know you're um, thinking of Troy well Troy, <laughs> <laughs> definitely Troy is, is part of that mythological you Paris know. yeah Helen and you know Delilah Samson, um, you know, so I think... Um, Does that mean that as the masculine, we are susceptible to the influence oh, definitely. of the feminine? Definitely. The, the feminine using uses... Qualities. Yeah, I mean, I think the feminine definitely uses that. And so what we need to look at is that there's a tendency for Eros and Thanatos, 
Eros and Prana, those are two opposing forces that exist within the universe. Eros is the creative force, and Thanatos is the destructive force. The life drive and, and the so death drive. And there's, so there's, um, there's psychological, psychologically we're facing our own mortality through killing, or we're facing our own mortality through creating. And so this is the mortal game. And, and everybody's entwined in that, both male and, and female. You know, you've got warriors like the Amazon, although mythological figures, uh, they, they have a place within our cosmic mythology, the, the, um, the female warrior. Um, you know, and female warriors have existed throughout history in all cultures, you know, very fearful women. Um, in the Hindu tradition, Kali, is a female and she's destructive um, and she's uh, the destroyer um, in many ways um, for you know good reasons but nevertheless she, she's a destroyer you know um, in the Greek mythology you've got Athena and Athena is very fierce uh, in terms she's very pious and just so she re represents justice but equally she's also engaged in war uh, on the other hand of Athena you've got perhaps Aphrodite uh, representing the um, erotic and creation creative aspect of of the cosmos um, so I think the Thanatos or destructive uh, quality exists within the psyche and generally how it is played out is within the male psyche and you know the male psyche in in that process um, is destructive but equally uh, within the destruction there is acts of bravery there is acts of um, um, incredible courage you know like I'm um, kind of like my mind goes to you know, being in the front line kind of thing and marching into the enemy's um, camp and being at the front and almost death certain, you know, the bullet is most likely going to get you uh, or you're going to be the first one to be killed uh, by a much larger chance than the person, you know, that is perhaps, you know, 50 meters behind you. And you're just going, you know, you're just marching in there in, into your definite kind of like death. And, and yet there's something inside you, so, something so alive still driving mm -hmm. you there. And so I think when we're looking at the warrior, um, it's a very complex process. And the archetypes that playing and, and the cosmic um, elements that come into it, uh, it's very complex, you know, so for us to, to truly give it justice and, and look at why as a humanity have we even gone in there? What is it that has driven us? And what is it as cosmic beings, you know, bring the spiritual aspect in? What is it that we have sought to learn to... Because um, Arjuna, you know, um, in the Bhagavad Gita, wages war and Lord Krishna behind him just goes like, just go for it, you know. Um, I'm supporting you, and he's fighting with his grandfather or great grandfather. Um, you know, in the um, in the Jewish, uh, in the Kabbalah or the Old Testament, there's you know wars going on, you know, um, continuously where God seemingly is this God in inverted brackets? <laughs> well, you know. Uh, it's who's writing the books yes well the reality is that exists and there's a certain allowance for something to exist you know I mean there, there are big questions now is God allowing this to happen and or are we just doing it on our own accord and where is God if we're doing it in our own accord and um, if we bring that element um, and we're definitely not uh, Richard uh, Durkin's kind of like um, Richard Dawkins. Durkins, yeah, Durkins. Durkins. <laughs> Richard Gherkins. <laughs> well, let's let's, come let's by, not Richard. ridicule the poor man. Uh, it's you know I say tomato, you say tomato. So keeping it within the. Um, within I say the, atheist, you say atheist. <laughs> that's it. Something like that. 
Um, I like that. So, okay. So looking, looking at that, um, you kind of like, it raises more questions rather than answers. And the idea is how can we explore those notions and, and what is it that we can get out of it so that we get, we move away from even, you know, what, what war brings in, what distraction brings on, brings a whole element of, of perhaps blame, guilt, shame, um, you know, um, that is primarily directed towards the mile because it's the mile apparently that did it. So the mile psyche can now carry that shame, that guilt or that pride of, of all these heroic acts or atrocities or, you know, death um, that's been committed, freedom that's been achieved, you know, because war in a twisted way has also created freedom. You know, um, you know we have certain sovereignty within um, aspects of the land uh, and war sometimes has been the way by which to exercise that sovereignty uh, when you know uh, we've got 400 years of, of Turkish occupation in Greece we've got uh, Jewish occupation now of the Middle Eastern uh, we've got um, religious oppressions within certain regions of the war or tribes entering into places of other tribes and territory you know uh, where boundaries are not being maintained and there is a certain other that's not holding the boundaries well and 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 war has been a way of saying no you can't do that so you know i think to to to, 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 to look at it as, as a black and a white and a very kind of like um, um, one-sided, um, you know, way, it, it gives... Deflavors. Yeah, it deflavors and, and kind of like looks at only one aspect and strips away from somebody. And we see, you know, like all of these, um, you know, uh, soldiers, warriors coming back from Vietnam, or Iraq now and you know Afghanistan and they're completely um, in one hand the some of them will feel entirely betrayed because they've entered into a war that really meant nothing to them directly mm. it was more a financial or political or territorial gain or resourceful. Uh, where resources in general it's always a battle for resources mm. somebody's coming to take your resources maybe you didn't share your resources willingly beforehand or maybe you were not asked to share them somebody just wanted to take them so there's all kind of things and i guess where i want to get with that is that that's part of the human history it's part of the fabric that cr makes us be who we are and in order for us to truly and honestly and deeply and profoundly reflect on, on such a deep um, issue will require a very broad spectrum. One that um, looks at, at both, you know, at, at, at the psychological, the physiological, the, the spiritual, the mental, the intellectual, um, the emotional spheres. And what does it do actually? You know, what is it, how does it, color somebody you know like uh, and war we always hear you know war brings the best and the worst you know some people at war flee whilst the brother gets shot um or they betray you know the armies or they act they my act in absolute bravery and selflessness uh, where they commit acts where you know through their sacrifice uh, perhaps millions of people or hundreds of people or tens of people or another two people or three people being saved you know like for instance i'll sit back hold space while you flee you know what i mean but i will sit there and i hold space you know what does it take for somebody at that moment in time to do that mm. and so i think in the in the spectrum of the human development those acts, those experiences, those influences color the psyche. And if you look at it from a place of spirituality, an undying spirit, a spirit that gets incarnated, comes back, lives, comes back, lives, um, has multiple experiences within the physical realm, what does those experiences generate within the psyche of an individual, both the betrayal or the act of bravery? 
and how that plays out of the male psyche but I will remind everybody again that the female psyche has just as much to play there is incredible spice um, within female spies, um, female warriors, uh, female that have political um, pawns that have played uh, phenomenal roles in the creation or dissolving of wars. So whilst we're looking at it from the mild psyche as the mild generally being the one that offers its flesh in the carnage uh, or what are mostly is a carnage, um, and, with the, and, and from the perspective of the female, primarily not necessarily always having a very front-line approach. Uh, although certain cultures like the, um, the Israelis, uh, both male and female, go into the army equal. Um, and a few other countries um, have kind of like taken that approach as well. I don't have full recollection into that. Um, but when we examine, you know, what makes one be one way or the other, I think it's always a very deep, a very profound, a very, um, you know, investigative approach that we need to have. And, you know, if there was 50 people here and perhaps we had some soldiers here, we had some warriors that this lifetime or perhaps might even have recollections of other lifetimes of them being in those places. You know, what has that generated in general within their own psyche? But mostly than not, my desire would be to dissolve shame, guilt um, and regret and looking at, you know, what's the qualities much more and how can we build from perhaps even the ruins that have been created? How can we rise, you know, through the ashes? How can we build a strong, um, resilient integral being out of any experience that we have gone through no matter how hard or no matter how difficult it has been and looking at both the positive and the negative and forming and i guess um, the notion that comes into my mind be a man and it's kind of like take it in take in all of that and process it effectively and i think not be a man as in swallowing it and, and holding with pride and, and not expressing and not examining and, and not reflecting, but be a man much more as in being able to um, own it, be it, uh, go through it, face it with integrity, be honorable. And that process, no matter how, will be a, um, a process of, of building an edifice of of the of any individual that will transcend you know any difficulty and so yeah i guess man's business man's secret business um it's all about that honest reflection as to you know what we how we look at each other in in social norms or you know in a post-feminist because i think we are in a post-feminist society as well you know where you know the phallus was to totally denigrated um, you know um, i remember in my you know even during my studies um, um during my studies i um, um I remember so distinctly, you know, I, I, I threw a comment and, and the comment was something to the effect, you know, like um, I was reflecting on myself, lived like a Swiss army pocket knife. And I guess what I wanted to say with that was, um, you know, I'm multifunctional. I, I, I can be this and I can be that. And, uh, and it was a female therapist that got up and said, oh, that is such a masculine um, way of describing things. So such a mild thing. I, said, I don't think she said masculine. This, I, I think she said such a mild thing. And I remember that moment, you know, I, I felt embarrassed, I felt ashamed, I felt belittled and deflated for a moment. And I think that's the kind of energy that she was sending towards me. And then suddenly something rose in me and I went, you know something? Yeah, I am a mild. And have you got a problem with that, you know, in a sense that that was a reactive uh, response, if you like it. But it was also a response 
or, or reaction of kind of like honoring my reflection right now. And my reflection is I am a mile uh, right now and that's what I am. And this is not about becoming less mile or more mile or more fem female and less female, but it's about honoring our space, honoring the very essence of who we are. And I think, you know, reflection as, as male uh, beings is how do we reflect into who we are, you know, and, and how do we honor or how do we learn how to honor uh, that which we are. So I guess this, is, this, this leaves it in a very open space and invites, you know, the people that want to join us on uh, the Tuesday, Mondays, uh, that we will be gathering here, um, and others that will be uh, wanting to tune into our podcasts or later uh, YouTube channel um, um, videos, um, and kind of like uh, be engaged either through Skype, perhaps if some people wish to engage through Skype, uh, then that, that would become possible for them or be in the room. And I guess this is the kind of reflections that we will have and invite others to be part of. So we'll leave it on that note and we're looking forward to perhaps joining you or you joining us in a, an evening of discussion and conversation relating to the dimension of the masculine psyche and how we can organize ourselves together, how we can communicate authentically to one another and how we can learn ultimately from one another so that we can uh, examine the deeper aspects of ourselves and come to a more integrated and whole perspective, perspective on our identity. Mm. So we'll be gathering here at, in Port Elliot at Authenticity Health Retreats at I believe seven o'clock yeah uh, seven o'clock so here at Authenticity Health Retreats Port Elliot if you are nearby if you are in South Australia we'd love to see you um, if you're elsewhere please contact us and we queue you in through a Skype channel um, and please email um, Alex on alex.d.carletti c-a-r-l-e-t-t-i at gmail.com and please give us your email so we can contact you and then we will exchange um, um, Skype channels um, so that you might be part of this if that's what you wish to do so um, I'd like to leave on that note and say thank you very much for queuing in, tuning in, and uh, yeah, onwards and upwards. Aho.